video is sponsored by Cricut. Now, if you don't know, Cricut make a range of smart cutting machines and I love using my Cricut Maker 3. You may have already seen on the channel, I do have a few tutorials where I show you how to make cake toppers, but this week I'm showing you how to make your own custom stencils that you can use on your cakes. So maybe you already have a Cricut machine and you're looking for some new projects or maybe you're thinking about getting a machine. I'm gonna be going through exactly how to design and cut out your stencils and then how to use them on the cake. I'm also gonna be showing you how I airbrush this and put it all together with these gum paste flowers. Okay, let's get started. So the cake that I'm gonna be putting the stencils on and turning into our tropical theme is this two-tier cake. Now I've actually covered some dummy cakes for this one just so I can show you the different techniques. But I've got a seven inch tier at the bottom and a five inch tier at the top. Now to make the stencils, I'm gonna be using my Cricut Maker 3, but there are so many different cutting machines within the Cricut range. So I will leave the link Link to the Cricut website in the description below so you can find all the information about all the machines there. The things I'm going to be using in order to create the stencil, first of all I've got some of the clear acetate sheets by Cricut which are going to work perfectly as a stencil. I've then got my Cricut standard grip mat and also my weeding tool. I'm going to prepare my acetate sheet on my grip mat. First of all, I'm just gonna remove that plastic sheet on the top of my standard grip mat, and this is gonna allow me to stick that acetate down. I'm then gonna take my acetate sheet, and it's got a protective film on both sides. Now I'm gonna remove that from one of the sides. The side that I've removed, I'm gonna place this on my mat, and just push that down. That's ready to then feed into my machine. Okay, so I've jumped onto the computer and I've just loaded up the Cricut Design Space. Now I've opened a new project. So we have this blank canvas. Now there are a few ways that we can create stencils. You can upload your own images. You could use text. You could import images from Cricut or even use shapes. Now, if you have watched my videos before, you'll know that I'm subscribed to the Cricut subscription plan, which is called Cricut Access. Now, there are free shapes and images that you can use within the Cricut design space, but by being part of the Access plan, this just allows you access to over 700 fonts and over 200,000 different images or projects that you can use, which have already been created. So in order to create my stencil, I'm actually going to go into images and I want to create the tropical tropical theme, so I'm going to add in tropical flowers. And as you can see, we've got all of these different images that you can use. So I can come down, and I did find one earlier I liked. So it's the yellow hibiscus. So I'm just going to click on that and come down to the corner and go add to canvas. So this is going to bring it in onto my design space. Now there are two ways that we can create a stencil for our cake. The first option is we could create single stencils, so just maybe of this individual flower that we can place against the side of our cake. The other option is to create a larger piece that we can wrap around our cake which has multiple flowers on. So I'm going to show you both ways. Now I want to make sure that I've got basic cut selected. So this is going to mean that the Cricut machine is just going to cut around the edge of this shape. Now I've got my ruler out and had a look at my cake and I think the ideal size for these flowers is around two inches. Now in order to change the size I'm going to click on the shape. Now I can either change the size just by dragging the corners or I can come up here and just add two inches into the width. Now, this is automatically gonna change the height to keep it in relation to each other. If you did wanna make the height different, you just wanna come up here to this padlock and unlock it. So that will allow you to change the height also. But I'm gonna keep it at two inches and just over two inches. Come up to the shapes panel and just select a square. I'm gonna right click and send this to the back so it's sitting behind that flower and I'm just gonna make that a border around the edge. 
Now I'm going to make that square the same colour as my flower. This way Cricut knows that I want to cut them out of the same material. If this background was selected in purple for instance, Cricut would think you wanted to cut the purple one out of one piece of material and the orange piece out of another. So I'm just going to make those both the same. I'm going to select that and if I come down to the bottom, I'm just going to attach those together. By attaching them together when I go through to make it, Cricut or no, just to keep them together on my mat. So that's one way that we can create a stencil. Now the other way is I'm going to create a square. Now I can't create a piece of acetate to wrap around my whole cake as you can only cut a width of around 11.7 inches on the Cricut mat. So I'm going to come up and unlock this shape. I'm going to create a width of around 9 inches and a height of 5 inches. And 9 inches is around half the circumference of my top tier. I'm then going to go back into images and bring back in my flower, resizing that down as I did before. Now I can place this on my rectangle and just in the corner you get this little bent arrow so that means we can rotate it. So I'm going to add that in and then copy and paste another one. So I've just used Control C and Control V on my keyboard. I'm then going to add a few of these. If you did want to duplicate it you can also right click and you've got copy and duplicate. Now one thing, if you have used stencils before for a cake, you will usually notice that they have tiny little holes in the corner and this is for adding pins so that you can attach them to the edge of the cake. So I'm just going to zoom in and I've created this tiny little circle. I can then copy and paste those and just drag them to the other side. And again, I want to select all of these and make them the same colour. You could also just make them white. So this is going to give us our stencil. Now, one thing you may want to do is bring those designs off the edges. It is entirely up to you however you want your stencil to look. Once you're happy, I'm going to select all of that and just go attach. So there I've got my two different kinds of stencil. Now before I send this to the cutting machine, what I did want to talk about is how important the shapes or the letters that you choose for your stencils are. So if we take these hibiscus flowers, you can see that each of the petals is made up of an individual shape that is separate from each other. The centre of the flower is also separate and we have space around the outside. Now if your shape was a little bit more complex or you had a separate shape in the centre, that's where it becomes tricky. For an example of this, I'm going to show you some text. So say we wanted to add the word tropical on to the front of our cake. So I'm going to do it in exactly the same way. Now if I zoom in, one thing you can do is if the shapes are a little bit too close together, I can ungroup that text and just space those out a little bit more. Now the problem is going to be these letters that have these shapes in the center. So what the Cricut machine will do is cut out where you can see these black lines. So it will cut out the outside of that R so there'll be nothing to keep the center of the R on your stencil. So this will mean you'll actually end up just with the outside of the shape. So what I'm going to do is create a little rectangle and just place that over the top, joining the two shapes together. Now if I select both of those shapes and come down to this corner and click slice, if I then select the rectangle, delete that, delete the next one and delete the next one, you'll see that now when Cricut cuts out our R, it's actually going to keep that centerpiece as it will be joined to our main stencil. And we can do this with any shapes or letters that may be like this. So you can see how important it is when choosing the shapes or the text to use on your stencils. 
you want to make sure that all of those pieces are going to be cut out how you like so i'm actually going to delete that tropical and we can now make our two flower stencils so i'm just going to come up to the corner and select make it with the acetate we are going to need a mat so i'm just going to select on the mat and the smaller mat. If you're happy, you can come down to the corner and click continue. Now I've got my Cricut machine attached to my computer via Bluetooth, so it's found my machine. We then want to select the acetate. Now if we go to all materials, you'll see all the things that the Cricut Maker 3 can cut. So we've got art boards, we've got chip boards, craft boards, we've got card stocks, we've got fabrics, we've got the fabrics just continue down we've got felt foam foil and metal we've got iron on the materials you've got leather and paper plastics and vinyls and lots of different other ones. So the things that you can create with the Cricut machines are endless. Now I'm going to come back up to plastic and you can see here we've got acetate so I'm just going to click acetate it's then asking me to load the fine point blade into my machine so the fine point blade is the blade that comes with the machine we then want to load the map Once I've loaded the mat, I'm gonna press go and the Cricut machine will start cutting out my stencils. Now, I love that on the screen, you can see how far through the cut the Cricut machine has gone. remove the mat from the machine I'm gonna peel off that acetate so I'm gonna start with the excess and just peel off the stencil so there we have our first one and I'm gonna do the same with this little one now on the mat we're left with all of the pieces so I'm just using the little spatula tool that comes with the Cricut Essential Toolkit. Once all those pieces are off, we can then just place our protective film back on our mat so that it's ready to use for our next project. So here we have the smaller of the stencils. Now you wanna make sure that all of the pieces that is cut out have been removed. Then wanna take off the protective film that was on the other side. And there we have the smaller of our stencils. Now for the larger one, I'm gonna do exactly the same. And again, I'm gonna peel off that protective film. So there we have our slightly larger stencil. Now the Cricut acetate is quite a thick acetate, which makes it perfect for creating your own stencils. Now to color my cake with some tropical colors, I'm gonna have reds and oranges and yellows. So I've started just by covering those dummy cakes in some white fondant, and I'm actually gonna airbrush the outside of my cake. This is gonna allow me to get the colors blending together. Now, one of the most important things when you are airbrushing is to make sure that you've got some card or something you don't mind getting color on behind your cake. I've also wrapped my turntable in some cling film and just put it on a board that I don't mind getting messy. When airbrushing, even though you're pointing it at your cake, that color is gonna go all over your kitchen. So you wanna make sure that you're protecting your work surfaces and what you've got behind your cake. So I've got my airbrush machine and I'm just using the Chroma Colors airbrush colors. I'm gonna start just by filling up my airbrush with the red. Now we don't want too much of that color to come out that our cake gets too wet. So I'm just gonna allow a small amount of that color to come out, just moving my cake at all times, just so it doesn't become too saturated. When I've got a nice red color at the bottom, I'm gonna switch to the orange, just working my way up the cake, making sure that I'm covering that join between the two cakes. Now, between the colors, I'm actually gonna wash my airbrush. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water in and just spray it into the sink until it's coming out clear. 
As you can see, we've got this really pretty blend between that red going into the orange. Now to finish off the cake at the top, I'm gonna add a yellow. Now you can add any colors that you like, depending on the theme of your cake. So again, I'm trying not to add too much color just so it doesn't become too wet as this will take ages to dry and we wanna add the designs from our stencils. So that's just a super easy way. By starting with a white cake, we can add airbrush color on to get this really pretty effect. Now my cake really has this tropical vibe. I'm gonna leave it to one side so that those airbrush colors can dry. Okay, so I've left my cake for a few hours and that airbrush color has completely dried. Now I've transferred my cake onto a clean, plain white board. And we're now ready to use the stencils that we've created. So I've got the larger stencil and also the smaller individual stencil. To use these on my cake, I've mixed up some royal icing to quite a thick consistency and I'm gonna be adding this to my cake with an offset spatula. Now to make my royal icing, I've actually used royal icing sugar and all you need to do is add water and mix it up. So I'm actually gonna start on the bottom tier using the single stencil. So I'm just gonna hold that against my cake. I'm gonna take some of that royal icing onto my offset spatula and just carefully spread this over the stencil. I'm then gonna smooth it out before peeling that stencil away and we can reveal this really pretty hibiscus flower. Now I'm gonna wash the stencil very carefully just to get that royal icing off so that we can use it again. I can then move the cake round slightly and I'm actually gonna turn the stencil just so that flower is gonna be at a different angle and do exactly the same. I can then continue all the way around that bottom tier. Now I'm using royal icing on a fondant covered cake but you can also do exactly the same if you were creating a buttercream cake. There we have the bottom tier with these really pretty hibiscus flowers where I've used that single stencil. Now I'm going to come up to do the top tier and I'm going to use that slightly larger stencil. Now it's exactly the same flower design but it means that I can actually do four flowers at the same time. Now at the side I actually added those little holes so what this means is I can take some pins which will just hold that stencil. I'm then gonna do exactly the same as I did before, just spreading on that royal icing and smoothing it out over all four of those flowers. Once that's been covered, I can then remove those pins and peel back that stencil to reveal the flowers. Once that stencil has been cleaned so that all of that royal icing has been taken off, I'm going to add it back onto my cake, just making sure that I'm not going over any of those previous flowers. I can then pop in my pins and again just go over those flowers with my royal icing before removing my stencil to reveal this completely covered top tier. Now I'm going to finish off this tropical cake with some tropical flowers. So first of all, I've made this really pretty pink hibiscus flower to go on the top. Now I'm just pushing that wire into my cake as I did use dummy cakes. But if you were pushing your flowers into real cakes, you wanna add those wires into some flower picks before pushing them in to make them nice and food safe. Now, as well as the hibiscus, I've also created some little plumeria flowers. So I've got some yellow ones and some pink ones. Now I do actually have individual tutorials for both of these flowers which I will put links to in the description below if you want to make some too. So I'm just going to fix all of those flowers onto my cake using a little bit more of that royal icing. So there we have the tropical themed cake which we've created using stencils that we made on the Cricut Maker 3. I really hope you've enjoyed this week's video and enjoyed seeing more projects that you can create using your Cricut cutting machine. If you have enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a like and I will put links to my other Cricut videos in the description below. Plus, let me know in the comments, are there any more Cricut projects that you want me to make on the channel? So until next time, bye!